welcome to what I'm calling the boss baby back in business bonanza. My name is Gray Drake. I am a huge boss baby super fan. <laughs> Nobody's more surprised about that than me because um, back in 2017, I sat in a movie theater and I watched this movie. And like at first, I was just like, okay, Alec Baldwin's in the movie. Cool, cool, cool. And uh, then when it was over, I was like, oh my God, I need more of this magnificence. And I'm so happy as a fan that DreamWorks Animation gave me that exact thing, which is four amazing seasons of Boss Baby back in business. And I have to say <laughs> that I've done a lot of things in my time uh, in this business. And today is like immediately one of my favorites. <laughs> I just love this show. <laughs> and so I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited to talk to everybody. So put your internet hands together for all of our participants today. Uh, we've got Alex Cazares, who plays primarily Stacy now, by the way, everyone on the show has several roles, but I'm just gonna be listing one and I'm gonna leave it up to you and the magic of the internet to figure out the rest of them. Uh, we also have Jake Green, who plays Bootsy Calico. Brandon Scott is Hendershot, Hope Levy is our mom, and David Collins is our dad, Mr. and Mrs. Templeton, and we've got Pierce Gagnon, Tim, we've got Justin Felbinger, who is Danny Petrosky, and of course, Boss Baby himself, J.P. Carliac. Hi, everybody! Hello! Yay! Hi! Yay! Hey, hey, hey! Hey! hey. hey. <laughs> So it's also my duty uh, to, uh, I said duty, uh, to make sure that everybody in internet land, maybe now I know why Boss Baby Back in Business is my favorite show. <laughs> That's right. Poop jokes. All yep. poop jokes. So um, just for everybody watching, Season four is available right now on Netflix, and that's really what I want to talk the most about today. And so depending on your level of sensitivity to Boss Baby Back in Business spoilers, uh, you may want to return back to this video after you've watched the season. And for the rest of you, if you don't mind, you're in for a real treat. Um, we're going to start off, and Alex, in just a couple of seconds, is going to take the screen share over, and she's going to show you just exactly how serious recording Boss Baby back in business really is, okay? It is a business, guys, really. So Alex, go ahead and take over the screen share and show us that clip, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh you guys for for me watching the show like that's kind of exactly what i hoped that this experience was like is like you guys sometimes together and just like doing what you do best, which is this amazing voiceover work. And I'd like to point out also, David, um, you really in that clip, like took a big like inhale and I could sense it like coming from your soul. <laughs> the, the, the craziness, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you what that was, but it was probably, it might've been uh, worker baby security Phil because he's kind of, got this dog energy. It was probably that, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, being in these cash usually is an exercise in just trying not to ruin everybody else's takes because you're just holding the laughter in. And, and usually, and, and poor Lisa, our, our director, she is always being like, guys, 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 calm down. Ca hey, stop it, stop it, we're recording, you know? Because everyone's always laughing at what everyone else is doing. And, and you go down the row and you feel the pressure of like, Oh, that was amazing. Okay, that's amazing. And then it gets to you and you, you you just go for it and have no idea what comes out. Yeah, it's it's pretty nuts. I love it. It's it I think that it seems to me like recording with other people standing next to you really changes like the energy of the experience. Hope, can you talk about how 
uh, this experience w was different from all of the other things that you've done? Are you in in context of working with other actors versus being alone in our own studios, which is most of the time when we do our auditions alone in our hovels, <laughs> creating um, to be with a whole cast is like magic. It's like doing live theater or improv. You are completely working off of each other's energy and you're trying sometimes secretly to make each other laugh because <laughs> you want to have fun. And um, it's just, it's magical when you're all like just in the flow and, you know, we completely working off each other's energy. It, it's just it's awesome. So much better than being alone in our own studios. And like, is that like, Alex, is that something that you, uh, have like a, a process for like if you're alone and you have to dredge up all this madness from somewhere like do you do something physically beforehand like what or do you have like a process your go-to and how you record I read the script <laughs> <laughs> I, I read it even more if no one <laughs> no one's gonna be with me so I you know, can hear them all in my head. But that's what Lisa's, our director's there for. She kind of is like, no, 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 no. You're not angry, you're sad. <laughs> I get that, that note a lot, less angry. Uh, <laughs> ditto, ditto, failure. <laughs> but sometimes you'll do something, sorry. But sometimes you'll ahead, do something hope. angry. You'll do something angry and you're like, wait a minute, that was supposed to be sad, but mm, I think, well, you know what? Maybe it'll work, you know? It's like. What the hell? Kind of uh, the Alex comes journey, in and right? she's, she comes in and she's all smiles and everyone's talking and she's, you know, we're all kind of hugging and saying hello. And then her line comes up and then we're all just terrified afterwards because that character, that character, <laughs> this sort of psychopathic, um, sort of unpredictable nature of Stacy is just really funny. And like Alex, you know, that is so sweet and we all have such a good time. And then if you get on the mic at this whole other persona comes out, which is amazing. Thanks. That, that's what's so, I think what's so great about the show is that um, I don't know if I'm like weirding you guys out with my complete like adoration of the show, but I think that consistently as a franchise with both a movie and a TV show that it's super fun and of course kids like it because it's so zany but at the same time it's so odd and it's so layered and it's so thoughtful that as a childless adult I'm super into it and I think it warrants discussion and there aren't well animation has certainly been making huge strides in that especially lately I just feel like Boss Baby is like this is like pretty unique cutting edge stuff and Stacy stands out a lot to me because she is just like this little dynamo with spiders in her backpack. <laughs> and so Alex, when you're playing a character like Stacy, like it, what, what's your favorite kind of moment or little, little bite about Stacy that you love the most? The best thing about Stacy is when she's telling a story about daycare. She'll be like, this one time in daycare, I did this really horrible thing, but it was funny. <laughs> and, you know, like, those are always the best. Or, or when she's yelling on the phone pretending to be an adult, this is Sandy Burgess? You don't think I'm a real adult? I, I so whenever she's angry, I guess. <laughs> And she's so no nonsense. Like she's my kind of girl. I hope that I was like Stacy when I was a baby, personally. But <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, uh, do you remember a notable moment when you were first watching the show or your performance, and, and what was that like? Oh my goodness! Uh, I think it, in terms of doing the show I was so nervous because like I mean these guys are freaking I I'm always blown away by all the the group records from the talent everyone who's in there and so uh I just like and I felt like it was like a master class in voiceover all the time and so um and then uh so I remember at first I did I mean uh recording and I was just like I don't know what what's going on what are we doing are we playing babies are we playing adults what does this all come come into 
I'm kind of neurotic, like uh, manager baby uh, Hendershot. And so, um, but then when I saw the first season, it was just like, uh, it was it was gold. It was gold. Just I think again, just this wonderful group of people coming together. But then also we just like what David said. We just try to make each other laugh and have so much fun. And I think all that comes across when you watch the show. Like hopefully you're having fun because we are having too much fun. And I think hopefully we're not giving anyone you know, like Lisa, you know, a heart attack with our fun. But I think that behind the scenes we're all just having a blast. So um, yeah. Speaking of like having a blast, uh, that is sort of synonymous with Bootsy Calico for me. Um, <laughs> Jake, this this villain, like obviously, I sort of have like a little bit of hair inspiration from Bootsy. Yeah, yeah you have um, a little Bootsy Buffon. I do have a little Bootsy Buffon. I love that the, this every villain has like this great origin story. And I love that part of Bootsy's origin story is that he's super mad at Boss Baby because he took a picture of his mother cat <laughs> hanging from a tree and made the famous hang in there poster. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like everybody knows that poster and that's Bootsy's mom, not cool. Not cool, dude. <laughs> and I was wondering if there were any like sort of admittedly hilarious rivalries maybe from your childhood that that evokes like I because uh, it, it always it made me honestly think back on my life and there was one girl you guys there was no, one I'm, girl no I mean not at all I love my older brother <laughs> it's fine he's about? not watching what are you talking about <laughs> everything's fine uh, no I mean like honestly the the writers did such an amazing job with this character that really all I had to do was just like say the words like really it's just like this guy hates this baby full stop you know and uh it, it was just so it was just so much fun every time uh, that we got a new script because there was just the perfect blend of this like saccharine sweet hatred that was just always so much fun to play <laughs> so it's, and it's super super fun to watch too because I always am like when are they bringing back Bootsy? And also, it's fun <laughs> to say it doesn't sound like a villain to me. Um, oh, it's just yeah, simple old Bootsy. <laughs> there you was gotta do your body language, Jake. Come on, when you're like petting it, yes, the cat, the body oh language, God. hilarious. <laughs> oh, or like when you were going, boss, but ow, boss. Oh, yeah, that was like, not quite great. sure. Not quite sure exactly what it is you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, there, so we were there when you did your season one, your big first monologue in season one, you know, yep. where you were monologuing and every ow, every once in a while, ow, you would do the ow. <laughs> Hilarious. You, you had to do like three or four takes because they were trying to get the perfect amount of owls. But I, I remember I was standing on your right and just watching you doing it going, oh my God, this is so brilliant. This show's going to be so brilliant. It was just so funny and like, oh, it was man. funny, but it was also like technically just right in the pocket every time. And you just kept recreating it over and over again. That was, there are a lot of highlights, but you, I mean, there's just so many great performances, but that was one that struck me really early on in the show is Jake's I agree. monologue. Oh, and that guys. was, that That's was the good. audition piece. Like yeah. that, that paragraph was the audition. And I remember, you know, cause I auditioned for a, a bunch of the characters initially. And that as, as, much as I loved getting Boss Baby, Bootsy was the one that was like, I wonder who got that, you know, because I really, but yeah, Jake's delivery of that the first time, I was like, never mind, he can have it. He's, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. I wanted Stacy, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that That's one of the interesting aspects of this uh, is that several of you are coming into a role that was already done on the big screen. And so JP, I wanted to know, uh, it's kind of a tall order, like as an actor, you're, you know, you're Alec Baldwin now, but it is so far, it, it's so far from what was created in that movie, it became like your own thing while still being the character. And can you talk about that process over the seasons of, of what it was like to do what I see as being kind of like growing into the character. Sure. I mean, when I was first auditioning for it, 
that the funny thing was is that Bootsy to me felt a lot more in my po- in the pocket for me. Boss Baby was just kind of like this is a stretch. Um because I don't think I sound like Alec Baldwin. I think I sound like Will Arnett doing Alec Baldwin. Um <laughs> And so, you know, I just kind of went in with that. And when I got the call back, uh, the, so the, the, the audition scene for that, I, I, which I definitely remember, was uh, from se- uh, season one, obviously, uh, where they go to Bootsy's cat tiki restaurant thing. And Tim takes him out into the car and, like, corners him and is, like, and talking to him. And, and Boss uh, Baby is trapped in the, uh, in the car seat and he struggles for a minute. And then he like, he goes immediately from struggling furiously to threatening Tim. And it, it's, it has the line, like you don't have the stones. And <laughs> there was just something about like that whole sequence that I just, that I loved so much and that really got everybody in the room excited. So I was like, Oh, I think I might get that. Oh, that's weird. You know, but, um, over the course of, of recording the first season, like the first few episodes, I, w- I came home and uh, I would tell my friends, I'm like, I'm exhausted because I feel like we were trying so hard to kind of tap into that fine balance between what I brought to the table and what Alec, you know, had already done on screen. Um, but the nice thing is, is that as time went on, there was that sweet spot that we kind of found, but it I think uh, Brandon, who's the show runner, uh, and uh, Lisa just really trusted me to kind of just take it and and know that I was on the right uh on the right path for uh BB and uh yeah it's uh so I don't I don't think I'm doing an especially amazing Alec Baldwin but I do think that I'm doing a pretty darn good boss baby <laughs> yeah and that everybody with their I I agree because I uh, it reminds me of when they did an American office when in the very beginning they were trying to uh replicate what had already been done right yeah and i i would just imagine that the pressure would be on like in the pilot episode of an animated series that was based on a movie that's based on a book that the pressure would be on but then as it becomes its own thing then it really starts to breathe and like you know you yeah, and I, I mean the interest as as these guys can attest to, like the the wacky thing about an animated show is we don't really have a pilot. We have a first episode, but they've had to order that whole run of thirteen, so we're kind of figuring it out and like warming up to it, and then maybe going back and doing pickups for that first episode to kind of like iron it out of what we found along the way, and you know, so it's really delivering a whole first season as a pilot and being like, I think this works. Hope you like it. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, I think uh, I, th- I really think like that first season was just so strong uh, coming off of a of, of a fun movie with Puppy Co and everything. And part of it, I think, has, certainly has to do with that. We had an amazing arch nemesis. But uh, uh, yeah, it was just it was just a really good crew. Um, uh, you know, I think we all uh, all of us that were had to tap into a an established character did so while making it very much our own, and the people that brought in something new were just whoop, whoop, whoop. it was yeah, super cool. And it it honestly, by the time that I made it through season four, I really felt like I had been on a boss baby journey, and I really felt that especially with your character Pierce, uh, because Tim is well, he's the only kid in this equation that's actually growing up, and. I was wondering if in the process of recording this show that you learned anything from the character of Tim because he's like, I wish he was a real person. I just really like him. <laughs> um, yeah, I definitely learned how to get along with my siblings better. Um, as as funny as that may sound, like I definitely think kind of seeing that relationship between Boss Baby and Tim grow during the tv show i think that was able to help me with my siblings and then also i think it helped me to be able to bring out the fun side of me i'm i'm still a kid obviously so that sounds also kind of funny but i feel like that's kind of suppressed in real life so i think it definitely helped me to bring out the fun side of me yeah just kind of let loose and like be wild and it's actually that's kind of it's it does sort of mirror what tim goes through because he really had, I mean, 
his younger brother is this little weird baby in the suit. So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Did I mention that I love the show? It is so weird. I love this show. Uh, <laughs> and Justin, I kind of thought about that for your character too, because Danny is, is he's so important as Tim's friend. And so is there, is there like a certain thing about Danny that you just love that was your favorite thing? I think just um, similar to what Pierce said, just like the, the fun, let loose, you know, like have some fun in life type of aspect about Danny. And I think Danny is able to uh, kind of help Tim with that a little bit, you know, get out and have fun, you know, like in, in, in one of my favorite episodes, PU, whenever they're like starting all these different businesses and just doing like living a, uh, just like a kid's life, you know, they're, they're having fun. They're doing imaginary stuff. It's, it's, it's really great. I love Danny's character for that. Yeah. <laughs> Have any of your friends been like, yo, Justin, <laughs> <laughs> like you're this the stuff that you do is awesome <laughs> have you gotten <laughs> like do they watch your stuff and talk to you about it yeah, um some of my friends uh have seen some things like uh I, I mean since middle school my friends have been going like oh you know whenever I was on Miles from Toronto they'd be like oh yeah we saw you on on that or Amphibia you know oh yeah we, we were watching your episode it, it's pretty cool to see but I know um especially a lot of my family um they always talk about Danny because he's just so funny. Like, you know, um, I, you know, some of my characters have been really funny, but I think Danny is probably uh, at the very top of that. He's just, he has that fun loving side to him and, you know, all the jokes and everything. So, yeah. <laughs> and especially like any character that talks about an epic bro jam for the ages, I'm on board right. with, like, Exactly, it. right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I highly encourage you in your real life to come up with like epic bro jams or otherwise, like <laughs> just epic jams and then play them for us because I love them. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I actually want to go through and ask you, I know that you've all played probably several characters, but if you could play any character besides the ones that you've played, who would you like to play and why? And I want to start with David. Me? Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine what it would be like to be Pierce or Justin and, and, and have such a great role at, at, at such a great age. You know, I think that that is just has to be a tremendous experience for you guys. And you're both just so good at it. And it lends this layer of authenticity to the show. I mean, it's funny you're starting with me and, because I don't mean to give a non-answer, but, uh, you know, I... I booked the show right as my first kid was born. Um, my son, it, who just turned four, um, you know, we were expecting when I had my callback. And of course I made a, 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 I of course made a point to mention it in the callback. It's like, funny thing, um, you know, I'm going to be a dad in real life, you know, and, and uh, shamelessly uh, used my real family situation to book a role. But but I mean, there are times when I'm reading the dad and Hope and I are going back and forth, which is just one of those great uh, working relationships that I just, I cherish so much because we have so much fun and those parents are so ridiculous, let's be honest. Having said that though, there are so many things that are in the script that I'm like, that hits a little close to home, you guys. That's too far, too far. No, no, not really. But I mean, there there's a lot of truth to playing that role and 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 you know just the concerns that they have of course it's it's amplified times a thousand it's you know it's all very exaggerated and you know um i love playing the dad role but i i don't mean to give a non-answer but it's hard for me to picture playing any of these roles as well as the people that are on screen i would love to try and play the boss baby i would suck at it i would love to try and play i actually got called back um to play Jimbo and the dad. And I, I read as Jimbo and they had me read it like three or four times. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna get that because I could tell they were looking for something that I just wasn't quite giving them. And then I showed up and Kevin Michael Richardson was Jimbo. And I was like, well, of course I'm never gonna book that. And you got Kevin Michael Richardson, you get a legend, you know? So it's just been such a humbling experience. And I'm sorry I'm going on for too long, but um, I'm really happy playing the dad and some of the other small parts that I got. But uh, 
uh, certainly, you know, during the audition process, we got a crack at, at, at some of the other parts and, and uh, I'm glad I landed where I landed, if that makes sense. Does being a part of the show make you wonder about your own babies in a different way? <laughs> yes. You have no idea they're listening right now. No, um, uh, no, no, my daughter. Well, actually, I should share a Halloween picture with you because this past, ha not this year, but pre-COVID last year, there's a there's a picture of me and my wife. My wife was like, we got to be do the, the Templetons for Halloween. So my daughter, who was like boss baby age at the time, she's dressed up in a little suit and then the rest of us all look like the rest of the family. And, um, you know, so a lot of times there is a close imitation of of art in our lives um but and it's, it is it's how you say it. great picture oh thank you how you say i thought you were gonna say creepy uh no no it, it was super super fun oh, you guys nailed it <laughs> uh jp um, if you could play oh, anyone if you could play anybody else not taking anything away from anyone else's amazing performance, sure. David. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who would you want to play? Take it like take a crack at. Um, probably Marsha Crinkle, but uh, <laughs> but honestly, I'm going to give a really boss baby answer for this job. If I could have a different role in the show, I would want Brandon Sawyer's job. I'd. I, I the showrunner not that I want to take it but that I want it I just want to be like one of his brain cells so shots I can, fired like, shots fired I know <laughs> here we're have a coming you know the I just want to be one of his out. I just want to be his brain cells to know like because there's some stuff that we read through that we're like who the heck came up with that like because it's hilarious but it's so off the wall like I mean, for instance, the interactive episode, which Jake was a wonderful part of, we the whole thing ends with the diabolical plan to make sweaters by with with cat hair and and baby saliva, and I'm like, who? Can I say something uh, yeah. amazing about that? So it, in season one, that's when we first meet Wendy, and I remember after the record, just like talking with Brandon in the lobby, and I was like, you know, they both love cats. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm, I'm not, not saying, saying I deserve writer credit, but <laughs> but like I'd accept the residuals check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, just uh, and not and not only just the, those strange ideas, but also just uh, I mean, you know, the beautiful way that he steered a, a four season arc and an interactive episode, and and um, I mean, because as you said, Gray, like it's a it's a funny, great show for kids. It's babies in suits. It's hilarious, but at the same time, like, there's a lot of there's a lot of heart to it. Like, the the stuff with with um with Tim and Danny is like, you know, it it gets me in all of my like like little kid with my best friend parts. You know, like, feelings, J JP. Yeah. They're called feelings. I don't I I don't know what those are. <laughs> human human feelings. I don't resemble that remark. <laughs> okay, we'll talk later. I'll I'll text you. You know. I think this might be a great time to bring up that this is one of the most satisfying ends to a season and kind of wrapping up this particular portion of the universe uh, that I've ever seen. It felt so emotionally satisfying to me. And um, Alex, do you want to roll the clip that you have of both Pierce and JP? Uh, the, and again... If you have spoilers, they're all over the place here, but uh, let's go ahead and take over that screen share, Alex. We'll run 220 to 240. Oh man, somebody trained their pet ferret to surf. It, it is cute as heck. One Stay. More, one more for and it is cute as heck. And it is, okay. Oh man, somebody trained their pet ferret to surf and it is cute as heck. Stacy, prep the field team. Hendershot, I want exact coordinates in 20 seconds. If we let that ferret get a toehold. What? It's time to let go. But the ferret, baby love. There's always going to be a ferret. <clears throat> There's always going to be a ferret. Or a hamster or just whatever. 
You said yourself you didn't want to deal with regular baby stuff. Can't we just stay like this? I wish we could. Because I'm going to miss you so much. But we're still brothers. Forever. I will be there. Last time you said that, I ended up plummeting off the side of a building. And I caught you. I didn't say I know how I'll be there. I don't know what happens next. Yeah. But it could be great. Just give me a day to plan my retirement party. You're planning a party for yourself? You know that's weird. <laughs> One day. Trust me. Your favorite tie clip? So good. Oh, guys. Feelings. Well, my mascara is a mess. <laughs> I know, JP. Oh. Just... I'm always blown away when I watch that. I've already watched it like four times today. <laughs> <laughs> and Pierce, what is that? What are you thinking as you watch that clip? And like, it, take us back to kind of, you know, recording that scene. And that brought back memories. Um, I think just knowing that that might be like the last time I see everybody, because, you know, that's the last time filming. I think there's a lot of real emotions behind that. Uh, I may have tried to cover it up a little bit at the end with a little dance, but um, I think there's definitely a lot of real feeling in that. And yeah, I mean, it's just sad to see everybody. I mean, it's happy to see everybody again, but it's it was sad to see them for what could have been the last time. What about you, JP? Well, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it, it was very that. I mean, um, oof. I was definitely focused on the relationship of the two brothers. And specifically, like, the first time that I recorded with Pierce and was just like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sharing all these scenes with the kid. And, and I don't, like... I'm filthy and I'm just, I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to ruin this. I'm terrible with kids. And, and we just started getting along really well. Like Pierce would tell me about his parkour and we had like this game where we would try to flip a bottle, like a water bottle. And he was always, he, I was terrible at that too. But uh, I, I don't know. We, we just built up this, this really, this really great bond as these two characters. And I think all, like all of the stuff that I was feeling was very much like the, Oh, that's that's going away, you know, or at least at least as these characters. So, yeah, that was, oof, it was a lot. A lot oh, fun. well, and even uh, when BB is giving everybody stuff from Baby Core, um, I was also thinking of like what he gave Hendershot and his little gift to him, and like that moment that they share was so sweet. And Brandon, I was wondering, uh, what is it that you'll take from your time on the show? Um, I, I mean, some I, this wasn't exactly a set, so it's not something that you could like take a souvenir from. But I mean, more like since we're all talking about our feelings, you know, uh, yeah. Um, what can I, I have? So much to take from this. Um, because again, like I, I do feel that in every time I was able to work with you all, it really was, I learned so much and I, I enjoyed uh, being hanging with y'all so much. So I think that's one of the things I'll take away. And then um, also, you know, there is this, what I love about the show is how much, I think you mentioned this earlier, it's, for, it's, it's zany, it's fun for kids, but as an adult, I thoroughly enjoy watching it. And I find myself often um, emotionally moved by it in the relationships. And I think the, the idea of letting go is, uh, that was something that hit me in this one. And then also even the, like, I was gonna say one of the characters who I would have loved to have played was a uh, mega fat CEO. And, um, and when like when when he had to let go too and just all these things, it's just like this this theme of just 
we don't want to grow up, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, but it's inevitable and we grow up and we let go of things and we, on this journey, um, it's, uh, it's okay. And I think that's uh, one of the beautiful things about, you know, you're watching this crazy fun show and it, get hit with those messages i'm just like damn this is again brandon brandon sawyer yeah we got to take his job like his mind is, is is ridiculous so um so yeah i think i'll just take away just again um just uh, such fun experiences working with fun people but then also i just didn't know that a uh, uh, i'm not gonna even say a, a children's show i didn't know a cartoon i didn't know this could be so uh evolutionarily uh layered and um i think they did a phenomenal job with it you know what it does uh for me as an audience member I, it tricks me um i'm having a good time and i'm watching this zany thing uh but i'm also watching like a really good lesson and i that's why i think it's so great for everyone to watch of any age um i think it's an exceptional achievement and alex i have to say i was so excited how this ended up for Stacy because the whole time I really am watching Stacy like she like we've talked about she's this like precious little psycho and we just love her but she really is like a ride or die and oh, yeah. so the one thing I didn't I don't think I caught it we didn't we haven't given Stacy a name yet, right? Like everybody else is Boss Baby and Mega Fat and all this, but Stacy doesn't have like a name yet, right? No, she's just a part of the field team. <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like in a way, I mean, I wanted to ask you if you had an idea for like a fun Stacy CEO name. Future CEO, current <laughs> and present CEO. <laughs> Boss's right hand man, girl, baby. <laughs> That's her title. I love it. And you know what else I, I feel like is that if Stacy made the choice, like she could just be Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> like the Cher. Ah, oh, man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, while we're talking about feelings. Justin, I was really like when Danny had to move away, I was really like, uh, yeah, but Clem and I, I was, I was wondering if you've ever if, like as a, as a young performer, like what are you drawing on for that performance? Have you been through something similar? What were you thinking as you're kind of making that episode? Well, I, you know, I haven't like had to move really much. I've been in the same house since I was really little, but, um, I have had to like move schools a lot actually. Um, and yeah, I kind of put that in my head while I was recording and, you know, thinking, wow, you know, uh, how do I bring all that emotion into the character? Um, so I just have to think about, you know, a time where I'm having to leave and I'm having to say goodbye to people that I don't know if I'll ever be able to see them again. Um, and so, yeah, it's kind of, it's tough though to get that like true emotion out, I guess. Um, but, you know, whenever I think of this amazing relationship that uh, Tim and Danny have, uh, I think it's a lot easier to, to bring that out when I'm recording. <laughs> Makes sense. I'm like, oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> the bro song. Um, and <laughs> Hope, I wanted to ask you, now, uh, if the reading that I've done is correct, uh, you are not the only one in your family that does voiceover. Is it true that your son is also in voiceover? Yes. Yes, my son is a voiceover actor. In fact, he had the pleasure of working on a show with Justin. They worked on Miles from Tomorrowland together. So, um, and they worked with uh, Lisa Schaefer, our voice director. So the voice director of Miles became our voice. Well, I mean, I got to work with her too on, on our show, Boss Baby. So it's so incredible to like, not only work with Justin that my son worked with Justin, then I worked with Justin and I'm working with the same director. So um, yeah, we're keeping it in the family here. <laughs> nice. I love the episode where Janice and Ted are teaching Tim like what it's like to be an adult because it's like <laughs> horrible. Yeah. Um, but kids think <laughs> it's coffee. so cool. 
<laughs> Although our kid doesn't think we're cool. There's an episode where I, now I don't remember, but I remember something like, he doesn't think we're cool. And, um, <laughs> right, David? And and I'm going through that now, having a not only a voiceover actor in the family, another actor in the family, my son, but he's a teen and he really doesn't think, you know, I'm cool <laughs> at all. It's fine. But um, so, yeah, art is imitating life. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> and right. how, what, what advice do you impart to your kid when they're in a sim similar business? Because I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to tell, sorry, Pierce and Justin, it's tough to tell kids things sometimes. Uh, what are, what's the kind of advice you, you give? Well, it's interesting because um, when my kid, Sam, got into voiceover, uh, everything he auditioned for, he basically booked. And I was, and I was always like, wow, he's like, mom, it's so easy. I mean, and I said to Sam, like, enjoy it now. And that's fabulous. But there might come a time one day when your voice starts to change and you know, the op things change. And he's like, really? So um, now that he's, his voice has changed, he's become a teenager. So think, you know, it's a little, he's entering another phase. So I just told him, you know, just keep, it's just, you have to enjoy the ride and enjoy sometimes not getting the role. It's part of the process because seriously, everything he auditioned for, he used to get. And, um, you know, I, I hate to just be the person say, well, like, welcome to the real world. There's a lot of competition out there. And, um, you know, you just have to keep a positive attitude and you have to enjoy the process, which includes auditioning alone in your studio. <laughs> and then it's so exciting when, uh, like I said, when you do get a job and you get to work with other people, it's just like you're you're let out of your box and it's so exciting. And Jake, I was wondering if there's a way that like in between roles, you're taking in new ideas or if you're practicing, like how do you stay sharp or do you just walk into it, read the material and go with that? Uh, so I've been a ridiculous person my whole life and have just like been doing voices since I was a little kid and it's just you don't say no I, I do I, I do oh I see what you did uh yeah yeah no so I, I do I do in terms of like the physical instrument it's a mix of like yeah like my I'm always playing around with my voice and just like literally slipping into characters uh and my wife's like we get it um but I think more than that, it's just, you know, it's auditioning, like as you, as Hope said, it's enjoying the process. And so for me, the, you know, the work is auditioning and uh, that's where I get to play. That's where I get to like work out if, if you will. And, um, you know, I'll, it's just always, I'm always trying new things and trying to stay sharp and have fun. You know, um, the, the great Charlie Adler once said, uh, if you're not having fun, get the bleep out of the booth. <laughs> which is true so I just strive to have fun and uh that's it when did you first realize that voiceover was an actual job it's so funny you say that um okay so growing up I uh had two passions it was uh it was acting and hockey and when I was I want to say nine or ten the all-star game for the NHL was in my hometown in San Jose and it was the celebrity all-star game so it was celebrities mixed with active nhl players and i i just i still remember where i was saying like the the pa announcer says and now welcome to the ice rob paulson the voice of yakko from animaniacs and i was like it's a real person <laughs> it was a kid and on steps ron because he, he's a hockey player he's played his whole life and he slips into the Yakko voice and it cracked open my brain. I was like, it's real, it's possible. You can not only like hockey, but you can be a cartoon. And it all came full circle because uh, I just got to work with him on the reboot of Animaniacs. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I gotta turn on the, the sound for that. Woo! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I and I got to tell him that story. I was like, listen, I know like a lot of people come up to you and they're like, this is how you changed my life. You changed 
my life. And I told him the story and he goes, oh my God, I did play in that hockey game. <laughs> he's, like, he's like totally forgotten. You know, for him it was like, oh yeah, cool thing for me. I'm like, no, this is like, this is like a building stone of what I do, <laughs> you know? So uh, that was, yeah, for me, that was the moment. God, that's that's my next uh, watch. Now that I made it through season four of Boss Baby and I'm sorting out my feelings, I'm really excited about that reboot because Animaniacs they... also let... I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I just was going to say, it really meant a lot to me. And I think when I look back, completely shaped who I am as a host and entertainer now. And... Yeah, just like the subversive, like, right? I mean so smart breaking the fourth wall i mean and they crush it this it's the the reboot picked up where they left off but like even sharper and funnier and obviously as current as they can be because you make a cartoon and then two years later it airs i i i i love thinking about that i love thinking about like who made you who you are in part you know especially as creatives it is very meaningful and, and you just soak things up like a sponge. And that's actually a great place to go as we start to wrap this up. Um, let, let's do another round Robin and feel free to just unmute yourself and start in like, who was one of the, the people, uh, one of the performers, one of the talents that really informs who you are? I mean, one of, one of the most, one of the first ones that comes to mind besides, you know, Rob Paulson and Jess Arnell, since we were talking about Animaniacs and getting to work with them, and, you know, is, is incredible. Um, one of my longtime idols is uh, Mark Hamill, uh, not just because of Star Wars, but because of the Joker and because of uh, all of all of the video games that he did. You know, I remember uh, being a young person playing Full Throttle and couldn't believe, you know, that video game that uh, I couldn't believe that Mark Hamill was in this game as this voice that I completely didn't even recognize and, and uh, you know, starting to piece it all together. I think everyone pieces together sort of the behind the scenes at their own pace, but that was one there. I mean, there's just so many, but that was the first that came to my mind. A, a fantastic example, I think, and meaningful to a lot of people. What about, what about you, JP? Um, the answer that I usually give is Bob Bergen because Bob was my mentor. Bob really gave me my start. I mean, you know, I, I owe he owes account. you 20 bucks, so you can't you can't use him anymore. He does. I, I get he, it. Yeah, in fact, yeah. Does. Uh, all around. Town. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I owe my career to Porky Pig. But um, uh, this time, I I mean, that is still standing. But this time, I'm also going to because he's was unable to join us today. I, I wanted to say Kevin Michael Richardson that uh, uh, what Brandon was saying earlier about a master class like Kevin is the master class. Kevin is. Um, a master class of, of just of being a professional voice actor and just an awesome human being. Like he is exceedingly talented and so stupidly funny and a, a wicked mischief, but uh, he is also just a wildly generous and decent person. And um, it's funny because the, the new season of trolls just came out, which I'm also on. And, um, and he plays, he plays the little troll smidge, which my partner was like, is that Harvey Firestein? I'm like, oh no, 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 no. That's Kevin Michael Richardson as well. Right after we had watched an episode of Boss Baby with Jimbo and all of the other roles that uh, that Kevin plays. So yeah, he's he's a he's a wonder. I have a clip. <gasps> Kevin clip. She has a Kevin oh. clip. It's super Alex, short. Do right. it. All right, I'm gonna share the screen. Oh, boss, 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 boss. <laughs> Um, the thingy's doing a thingy that I, I, am okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, very oh that, very that. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh, my mind. God. Uh, Alex, let's, thank you for being our screen sharing master today. Um, what, what are, what about you creatively? Who do you want to bring up? Oh, I had my professor in college. I got to take a class with Van Partible. He did Johnny Bravo. And he had, you're right, he had all these awesome people that he knew from the industry. For example, Rob Paulson. He came to our school <laughs> and he sang. He sang the, the countries, you know, all the countries. And he was just blowing everybody's mind. And 
th Van kind of encouraged me to keep looking into voiceover and ex and taking classes and uh, he's like, Alex, you should ask some questions, write down some answers. <laughs> yeah, so, man, <laughs> uh, it was one of the greatest classes ever because he, he kind of just taught you how to be an adult <laughs> and talk to <laughs> other people in the industry and not look like a, a fool. But, <laughs> but yeah, and, and it was a good time. You got, I got to meet a lot of really awesome people that I wanted to learn more about and that eventually brought me here. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I love it. What about you, Hope? I wanted to get into voiceover because I, I'm a singer primarily and I loved The Little Mermaid <laughs> and I loved Jodie Benson's voice. And I'm like, I wanna do singing in, in Disney films. And, and then somebody said, well, you need to take classes. You need to learn animation as well. And so um, really I was inspired, I feel like by The Little Mermaid. Um, I just wanted to get into it musically. And then, um, and then I started learning about directors, like I, I started watching so much. And then I wanted to work with like Andrea Romano and Charlie Adler. And actually my first voiceover job a long time ago happened to be with Charlie Adler and Tim Curry. And I, I lost, lost my mind because of course I love the Rocky Horror Show and being a musical theater person it's like it was a dream come true <laughs> so I don't know it's what can I say it, Hope, that was my first job, first so, job. So, yeah it was oh my god it was unbelievable I was paralyzed walking, with fear yeah, walking into that yeah. room yes I was so scared but then I they were so amazing and generous and I had the best time ever but um really again singing is how I wanted to get in originally. I think my first job was a Snickers demo. <laughs> <laughs> Snickers. I a demo? Wait, what is a Snickers? I know what an ad is. What's a demo? It's, You're at the it's an ad that no doesn't get made. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Did you get to eat the Snickers? Uh, this, is like, this is like an ad that we're thinking about making, and then like they either do or don't make it. It's an ad, David, but it doesn't have the residuals part. Right. <laughs> yeah, you do the same exact amount of work. And then what JP said. Ah, but we're, we're snickle, Snickers involved in the eating process. I mean, that's just how I live my life. Okay. I, I would totally buy candy from you, bro. So. I don't know how to respond to that. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and Pierce, is there someone that you like you love listening to them or even somebody that's been really encouraging to you as a younger performer yeah so obviously I'm younger so I haven't had as many experiences with you know that kind of thing but somebody who really stood out for me was JP actually the way he just embodied the character especially as the show progressed I could really see him becoming boss baby um so I thought that was really inspirational and that really made me want to work harder at voiceover. Shucks. Nice. I owe you a 20. <laughs> <laughs> Once Bob Bergen pays yeah, me, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brandon? You know, uh, similar to Hope, I'd say, I, I mean, I was more uh, into music and um, I kind of stumbled into voiceover, which has been awesome. I'm a big video gamer, but um, I just, as a child, I mean, watching Animaniacs, watching, uh, you know, Looney Tunes, all these things, I was always trying to mimic them. But I just remember uh, learning that um, I had a crush on Chris Summers, who was in It's a Different World. And then um, when I was like, oh, she does cartoons too? And so, um, I don't know, that's my earliest memory of saying, oh, okay, what's, what's up with these cartoons? And maybe uh, I can meet Cree Summer one day if I, you know, <laughs> get these cartoons down. But uh, that's, that's, I really, I don't have any, uh, anybody that, you know, I can specifically name that I listen to, but, um, but I think that, again, similar to what Pierce said, I mean, like, everyone here has just been like, it's been a masterclass, seriously. Have you met Cree yet? No, I'm married. It's not. It's, 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 <laughs> work with her. <laughs> not good. It's not good. <laughs> I mean, you you could just say hi, like. <laughs> be like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no, I haven't. I haven't. But I've just been a fan. And even like, I mean, I thought it was dope. I, 
it's so interesting now that I think I also like uh, learning that Regina King did voiced on the boondocks. I think these, these women voicing these, these roles, I'm just like, and, and I never in a million years thought the kid on the boondocks was voiced by Regina King. And I was just like, oh my God, uh, you know, what people can do with their voices. And maybe I'd say Robin Williams, Robin Williams somewhere in there. Yeah. Definitely for sure. Pieces of everything that you take in it, you know, just becomes your, uh, your translation of yourself, I think. Um, and so Justin, is there anybody that has like really supported you or that anybody that makes you go like, whoa? Yeah. So, um, I mean, D Bradley Baker is, you know, just amazing. And, um, I was just really shocked whenever I first met him and cause he, uh, we worked on miles from Tomorrowland together and, there would be a couple of times where I'd get to go in and record, uh, record with him. And the first time, like, um, he was doing the, uh, like bird sounds for this character called Merc. And I was just shocked. Like, I was like, how can a human make that noise? Like he is just so talented. And it's crazy because whenever I was, uh, I was being co coached on, uh, becoming a voiceover actor. Um, I had to, I had to do like little voiceover actor reports um, that my coach was having me do. So I'd write, oh, uh, what shows has this uh, big voiceover actor been on? And uh, I believe the first one I did was D. Bradley Baker. And so I, you know, I was looking at all the work he's done and looking at his IMDb scrolling down and there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of characters. And it's just so amazing how talented he is. And he's a super nice guy too. So I, uh, I really, really look up to him and uh, I was really glad to, be able to meet him, especially when I was younger, so I could learn uh, from him and his talent. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely a legend. And yeah. from where I'm sitting, as a fan on the couch, just enjoying everybody's work, uh, I do want to point out that you here are that person for someone out there. So nice work. <laughs> right, that was nice. <laughs> I just love Boss Baby. <laughs> Gray, I'm, out, I'm, out of, I'm out of twenties, Gray, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No problem. Yeah, so that gave me the Comas at each feels. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex, are we are do you have any more clips or are we done with clips? Oh, I got one really short one of Lisa directing. <gasps> oh my God. She's going to kill you. Play it. Oh, <laughs> do it. Amazing. <laughs> Don't tell her. <laughs> um, it's kind of cool because, you know, when, we're, when I'm taking clips, usually I'm taking it of these guys. And I wanted to, to make, make sure, sure I remembered, like, who the engineer is, who, who the coordinator is. You know, they're all a part of it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, uh, we spent a lot of time at Soundworks, and all those people are really, really cool. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's such a They're huge amazing. undertaking. Such a cool, it's such an amazing skill. It, it really, <laughs> I, I think it's my favorite thing about this kind of art, like animation, movies, TV, all that, is that it truly does take the effort of so many people, and everything that you see on screen is a miracle. Super hard because she has to remember every single person's part in her head how it's supposed to sound and then now and then we're not even recording together so she has to remember from how you record how that actor recorded it in the last session brings it over to the she's got a really hard job and what else she does which is amazing is she tells you what to do without telling you what to do I, I mean I, I don't mind when I get a read I think it's easy when they're like can I just tell you how I want to say it and I'm like yeah but Lisa will will tell you without saying it exactly like you know you're you have to start off a little more with more feelings or this or that and then you know the performance comes out so let me show my last clip <laughs> Anticlimactic, guys. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so let me get 192 uh, worker babies following the tachyel. So they're intentionally dropping down and then attacking everybody they see. So that is the ship. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> There's Brandon in the background. Oh, yeah. This here. 
and Megan. Isn't that Megan? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Dustin. Yeah, uh-huh. Dustin. The game. Oh, I love it. It's a. Uh... I just love the out of context of, and worker babies are dropping down. So, (laughs) (laughs) I think the next the next uh, thing we did was we went around the group and we all screamed, (laughs) like ah, like that. (laughs) I think it's fantastic that we ended with a clip of the folks that are steering this magnificent ship that you're all on, and it again, it's so much fun. Think how many parents you've saved with just capturing their children's attention. Think how many adults in various stages of sobriety you have allowed to just enjoy their time (laughs) on the couch. (laughs) And I really, there's no, there's no other way for me to end this uh, other than just saying yellow 100. Yellow one hundred. Yellow one hundred. Hey. It was a delay because I had to unmute myself. <laughs> I do remember seeing the title of that episode, and it was just like, "Oh, so this is the pee joke episode." Okay, uh-huh. well. <laughs>